Today is October 20th, and surprisingly, they're still giving out, well not giving out, they're still selling the Hatbox Ghost Tiki Mugs. So I got my wristband to come back later tonight, maybe enjoy Trader Sam's Grog Grotto, maybe not, maybe just enjoy the Tiki Terrace, but definitely pick up the Hat Hatbox Tiki Mugs. But now that I've got my wristbands, it's time to jump on a monorail and head over to Epcot. Okay, so I came over to the TTC to transfer over for a monorail to Epcot, and the Toy Story wrapped monorail apparently is broken down, so I'm gonna be dodging that. I'm just gonna drive myself over to Epcot, and then I can use the Skyliner, hopefully it doesn't break down, um, to get to Hollywood Studios later tonight. So, to the car! So that was the first for me, actually witnessing and semi-experiencing a monorail breakdown. And like on Twitter and like on the internet like I've seen, many guests were not happy and demanding that their tickets be comped for full price and whatever because we've all paid for this vacation and it's not the way to go about it. Yikes. First thing, now that I'm back at Epcot, gotta go get the Ratatouille AP Magnet. Which has quite the line today, holy cow. Okay, I got my annual pass holder, Remy Ratatouille Magnet. Now time for some fast passes on a couple of attractions that are changing in the very near future. I love Spaceship Earth, and I gotta say, I am cautiously optimistic for the changes coming forward, because the 90s version with Jeremy Irons, both the narration and the scenes were, were much better than what we have today. This is still a great attraction, but the 90s version with Jeremy Irons, 94 specifically version with Jeremy Irons, was my favorite iteration yet of Spaceship Earth. So I am very cautiously optimistic for the future. So now, from one attraction with many changes confirmed to another attraction that is going to have to alter at least how it ends. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. So I just went back in the Magic Eye Theater to watch the Pixar 
Film Festival. That's actually the first time I've been in that theater since Honey, I Shrunk the Audience was in there. And that terrified me as a kid because I am petrified of snakes. And if you know that film, there's a snake in that, giant snake. And I forgot how awesome that theater is. And the shorts in there are amazing. The 3D is amazing. That's probably the best 3D theater experience outside of Muppets here in Walt Disney World, to be honest. Dancing water fountains up here by imagination and the Image Works theaters. It takes me back to being a kid. Like, I can't stop grinning just walking around back here. It's, it's just Disney. It's classic childhood Disney. I cannot stop grinning just walking around watching this water and watching the kids play with it and be amazed by it. I love this so much, dude. This is like perfect. That's gonna do it for Epcot. So now I'm taking off, gonna head to Hollywood Studios, jump on Slinky, maybe do the Falcon, definitely visit Galaxy's Edge. And after that, I gotta go back to the Poly to pick up the Tiki mugs for both myself and Brad. We made it back to the poly. Let's go pick up those tiki mugs. All right, now I have to present my receipts when I'm finished drinking both of these beverages to get the mugs for both myself and Brad. But I got each of the two drinks that were options. Got the Foolish Mortal, which is non-alcoholic and the Grim Grinning Grog, which is alcoholic. So I'm gonna give them both a try, get out of here with my mugs, and head to Hollywood Studios. All right, I downed the non-alcoholic Foolish Mortal. Let's give the Grim Grinning Grog a try. Honestly, they're both pretty good, and I'm not a food or drink critic, so I'm not going to break them down, but this one has very strong rum in it, but it's good, and I like it. I would definitely get it again, but I'm glad I came just for the mugs and the drinks alone. Good stuff. Sheesh. I'm not back to Galaxy's Edge yet, but right, sons, is right. I'm heading back to Toy Story Land after finally making it back to Hollywood Studios. Let's get a ride on Slinky Dog, one of my favorite coasters in all of Walt Disney World. Galaxy's Edge. Love it. is way better than the other one through Grand Avenue and Muppets, but 
It's not a visit without coming to Galaxy's Edge. It doesn't count, you know, if you come to Hollywood Studios without coming to Galaxy's Edge. Always make a point to come back here. I love how you can just barely see the tippy top of the actual Black Spire of which the outpost was named. The one that's posted up over by Doc Ondars. But I love how you can see it from almost anywhere in the outpost. Hence why it's really the outpost's actual weenie, both in universe and out of universe. All right, it's not even Halloween yet. What the heck, y'all? I, I don't know, I, I don't know. I've only been here in December once, so this is the first I'm really witnessing the whole Christmas thing. And it's not even Halloween. This is too much. Too much. You got your Halloween merch right there. And then you got your Christmas decorations right here. Come on now, Disney. What are we doing? Alright, I've made my way down Sunset Boulevard like I always do every time I come to Hollywood Studios. And I'm actually not going left. I'm actually not going to the Rock and Roller Coaster for once. I'm going on the freaking Tower of Terror again. I'm keeping that running joke going. Running joke stays alive. Now if you follow the Drunk Stormtrooper on Twitter, he's dragging me on the Tower of Terror. It's the fourth time I've done it, and it's a running joke if you've seen my, my past videos where a friend always makes me go on it. And I always swear up and down that I'm done, never again. But every time a friend brings me here, I do it. So I'm back, fourth time. Hopefully it's the last time. <laughs> This, as you may recognize, is a maintenance service elevator, still in operation, waiting for you. We invite you, if you dare, to step aboard, because in tonight's episode, you are the star. And this elevator travels directly to the Twilight Zone. For your safety, once on board, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened. shaking a little bit from it like and I feel like I feel like there's some new bouncing effect in between the ups and downs where it like hover and just kind of up and down I did not like that but I mean it was cool but I didn't like it but fourth time I'm done I hope all right now from one of my least ridden attractions to one of my most ridden attractions that I always do when I come to Hollywood Studios Dude, I'm going through the chicken exit because we have to rider swap for my lightsaber. You can't take sabers on, so chicken exit. This is weird. Didn't know what to expect, but I guess this is what to expect. Cool. Well, that's where it was, and I'm out right here. That's cool. Knocked out Rock and Roller Coaster and the tower in one night, back to back, basically. All right, time to make my way back through gorgeous Toy Story Land at night to find my way back to Betu. Howdy! Being here in the backyard with all you... Just like that, I am back home. 
feels like it's been centuries since I've been here. I only live a few parsecs away, man, but I'm finally back. They caught Vi again. She's gonna escape pretty soon. She always does. Those troopers aren't really much without Kath leading them anymore. Where's it, Kath? Shoot, Wolfgar. You know who I'm talking about. If you've read Black Spire. you can see in the cockpit. I know I've said it, but that is so cool. What a great detail. Also a cool detail. The obvious stormtroopers. I love them. So cool. The resistance spies will be found. You've been warned. Not by you guys, though. It's never a complete visit to Batu without helping Hondo and Naka get some, some credits for himself and maybe some for us if we're lucky. So let's go solo rider for the Falcon. Probably I'm not the first person to notice, but I just noticed that this petrified kind of spire looking thing here is actually the one in Disneyland that a lot of people claim we don't have here at Walt Disney World, but it kind of throws them off because our X-Wing is here when their X-Wing is not here. Their X-Wing is across the way by the A-Wing where our X-Wing is by the petrified spire. If you could follow any of that. Um, what I'm trying to say is I feel like I just now noticed it and people are kind of confused because they didn't think we had that rock tower there and we actually do, it's just we have our X-Wing next to it as opposed to across the way by the A-Wing. I don't know what's going on there but a lucky select few people are going back into Rise. I didn't get a good look at any of them so I don't know who they are but Lucky dogs. I don't know if you can see it, but I also am just now noticing the lighting back in the queue. I'm not talking about the light, the light post here, but those lights back in the queue along the cave wall. I just finished reading Black Spire, and I'm so excited to see the encampment in the Resistance Caves. And right there is that gigantic hole of a ship that's just crashed into the side of the mountain there. I can actually come over here and see it. I've never really got this close before. I'm not standing anywhere. I shouldn't be, obviously. I'm right here in the resistance camp, in the resistance forest, but I can see that giant hole. That's so cool. I'll be, I'll be back there in December. I, I can't believe it.
It's so close, man. After reading Black Spire, I cannot wait to go explore those caves back there, dude. Can't wait to see the Indiana Jones level of detail and booby traps and just little things to look for and little nods to the books and to the characters that some of us know, but most of us don't. But it'll still be excellent backstory and excellent detail and just theming to the overall story. Cannot wait to go explore back there. I mean, just right back around to the left right there are the caves at the ancient ones and are the ancients I forget what they called them in Black Spire but the original people that settled on Batu created and lived and that's where they hid all their secrets and booby trapped them long after they were gone and that's where Vi Marati herself went and explored and set up this resistance encampment so I cannot wait to get back there and check it out so soon it's less than two months away now